Hey guys, and welcome to the 8th installment of my Ultimate Gill Making Guide series. As a super quick reminder, all of these videos related to gill making are going to be under the gill making playlist on my channel, and as I add more videos related to making gill, this playlist will be continuously updated. So in this video, I'm going to be a little bit more advanced, and so I am actually going to be relying heavily onto your comments to see if I explain things properly or not, or if something might just be a little confusing and need a bit of clarification. So I am going to be really determining if I'm going to do another video on this topic or a clarification video based on feedback. Because today we are talking about flipping the market board. So if this guide helps you and you want to help support me and my channel, I would be incredibly appreciative if you catapulted a market board at that like button. Don't worry, we have a little bit of brace for impact and flipped a cat daddy onto my subscribe button. So when someone talks about flipping the market board, not catapulting in this instance, it means that you are essentially searching for opportunities to sell something for a higher price than what you got it for. Your profit lies in intelligently buying items and selling them at a higher price point. While a lot of this might seem like you're outsmarting people, I am going to be very blunt. A lot of people will eagerly pay for convenience, and in a lot of ways you are a digital equivalent of a pizza delivery driver or Uber Eats. No, not sponsored, although I sure wish I was because darn it, <laughs> this year of layoffs hurt. Sponsor me, please. But in reality, if you show, or when I show you some of these markets and expose them, it's not that people aren't necessarily aware they exist. It's often all about time and convenience. Although in some cases, like the housing items I'm about to identify, it is going to be more than likely that people have simply flat out forgot that these markets exist, or they have simply chosen to focus their gaze and attention at different markets, which is totally fine for the record, no shame. And it does work well though for us that they're looking somewhere else because that's when we get to step in and seize a market opportunity. Now there are a few ways to flip the market board and in this video I want to say I am avoiding talking about crafting entirely. Craft flipping is a very different topic and will probably be divided into a few videos in and of itself but crafting is not in this video. So. Uh, I am going to go though for a pure flipping perspective from lowest risk to highest risk because whatever you are doing relies on other people to buy a product so there is a factor that what you're doing might not sell at all and you might actually lose skill especially with flipping. Also I do want to state for everyone to be very cognizant that market board taxes are a thing for this entire video. Whenever you are doing something on the market board you are at risk of being taxed. So if you buy from the market board no matter what city state you're in, it was actually from a recent update, you're going to get a flat 5% market board tax whenever you buy no matter where you're at. Selling though is a little bit different and so you will need to talk to the retainer vocate to know the tax rates. Either way, it's going to be either a 5% or 3% market tax rate on selling, but that really depends on if the retainer vocate setting if that market is reduced or not. But being blunt, I just go in with the expectation of 5% tax to buying, period. 5% tax to selling, period. So say you are looking at a potential profit of buying eggs for 500 gil and then sell them for four, 540 gil a piece. Technically, if you look at just those numbers, that's going to look at uh, profit. Um, but generally speaking, that's going to work out to your detriment uh, because the only time that you're... How to say it? The, you are going to be losing guilt. That's the only way to say it. You are going to be hit by a 0 0.05 market markiplier, markiplier, multiplier tax, and then when selling it, you're going to also be hit by that 0 0.05 or 5% for selling it. So that would be a loss of guilt for there. Anyhow, I have talked enough about taxes and all this preamble. With all that said, let's start with low risk markets. This is involving buying items from NPCs and selling them on the market board for sometimes a very significant gill premium. A good resource to check out what NPCs sell what is always going to be Garland Tools Database and I strongly recommend this resource to be used when you are trying to investigate who sells what and where, especially because I could not hope to possibly cover every single item from every NPC in this video. So just go through the various NPC stores on Garland Tools and see what's unique for them because good chance if it's unique, someone's gonna pay a convenience fee. 
So in my last videos in my series, I was talking about deluxe garden plots and cracker root seeds. So looking these up on the market board, which I warned you about already, you can see that there is a decent net profit for this already on Gilgamesh. Convenience pays. I'd recommend everyone to look at what other seed types or housing items can be purchased from that housing NPC or other housing NPCs and see what else can be flipped. Other markets that can be lucrative for items come from beast tribes such as the Bomb Ash can be bought from Kobold vendors for 82 gil apiece, and right now on Gilgamesh they're going for roughly 240 gil apiece. So or from that same Kobold vendor, you can buy blue, blue land trap leaves for 128 gil, and on Gilgamesh they are going for 120 gil apiece. Whoa, oh my. Beast tribes are absolutely profitable, and I would look at these vendors for sure if you have them. Convenience pace, absolutely there. Starter weapons would be another good low risk market that can be bought from NPCs and then placed on the market board for potentially significant profit, such as right now there are no astrologian weapons for level 30 astrologians, so brand new astrologians. Say someone just unlocked an astrologian and then they threw out the weapon just to make space because they're like, I'm never going to play astrologian, this is garbage, and then they go back to level it. Yeah, that is a very common situation that I am told about a lot. So basically, a lot of people don't want to hunt down specific item level NPC gear. And so this also does expand even to Shadowbringers levels because there are NPCs in Shadowbringers that are selling specific item level items and it can be profitable, but check the market of course before to buy those items and then flip them on the market board. And so this isn't just level 30 items, this goes all the way up until 80. Check out your NPCs and see what you can flip. Now I want to talk about what I'd call medium risk markets. These involve a few different techniques but revolve around the notion that you're willing to part with a larger amount of gil to buy items from player to player to try and sell at a higher price. So it's the exact same idea. So in this area, in terms of anything but crafting, because I would generally call crafting medium risk items medium risk, Generally, you are going to be talking about server transfers, and so this is not where you actually have to transfer server. What I mean by server transfers is you can swap server on your same data center. So from Gilgamesh, I can go to Cactor, or I can go to Midgard, or Siren, or Fairy, or what have you. And so what I would check on other servers is see any high ticket item like Trial Drops, Expensive Crafter Reagents, Bojan Southern Front Upgrade Materials, all of those kinds of things should be on your list of items to check. Also, keep in mind you can find other things with Garland Tools. I, I know that I'm plugging that a lot, but I can't emphasize how important that is to just make you aware of items. So do consider other markets like potion consumables, food, uh, housing items that can be crafted can also be seen this way, such as if you see a grade 3 picture frame on Siren and on Gilgamesh it's selling for significantly more, then I'd buy it off of Siren and then flip it on Gilgamesh. So you can make quite a lot of profit just from flipping items though. But I have said that I'm not going to get into crafter stuff and crafter flipping in here, so I'm moving right on from this medium risk. Now I want to talk about high risk markets, and these are going to yield sometimes the best reward for your gill in my experience, or become a very massive pain in the backside to say the least. So here we're talking about special glamour pieces, we're talking about special housings, we're talking about materia and potential crafter reagents, and Patch 5.4 is coming out fairly soon and that means that there are new crafted combat gears, a new raid tier, and an influx of more players, veteran or new, coming to the game. So let's start with 5.4 for crafters. This means that crafters on patch day are scrambling to get all of the materials that they need so that they can be on the market board within the first hour if at all possible since for them, that first day or so is a massive, massive gill making window. I cannot emphasize how big the profits are from this. And yes, that is going to be its own video. But this means that you need to do your best as someone looking for profit from their crafting machine by feeding them resources just from a flipping standpoint without going into the crafting yourself. You can profit a lot by feeding their crafting machine. So as a rundown for newer players, the items that crafters will be looking to maximize on 5.4 are going to be temporary potions that are called tinctures, longer duration foods, any weapon, shield, piece of armor, cloth, leather, plate sets, everything. My recommendation is to look at what we currently need for tinctures or other crafted items and try and find a pattern. Again, though, just to be super clear, this is high risk because only the developers will know before the patch drops what is actually needed. Invest carefully. 
So 5.4 for Raiders, though, is that they want to buy crafted gear that we talked about in Moss. Okay, so that's nice. But Materia Flipping is one of the most lucrative markets that Raiders buy absolute tons of tons of. So every piece of gear that you can equip needs to be replaced by newly crafted gear and then Penta Melded. So five Materia for Raiders that are trying to push the first week content as effectively as they can. That means that every single piece of gear needs at least two maximum grade eight Materia and then three of the other Materia types. But of course, everyone's mileage might vary and they might decide to meld differently. But what happens is that with material melding, it's very expensive and it can often fail when you're trying to socket or over meld material. I do have a guide on material melding on my channel, so if anyone wants more detail and domain knowledge on that, please check that video out. But when it comes to raiders, as someone who has pent melded many gear sets in the past, I'm going to be honest, this material market spikes up every even numbered patch through the roof. Like these plus 20 material for crit, they are going to inflate in price most likely. Again, I cannot guarantee you that. I do not have a crystal ball, but what supply and demand normally dictates is that slamming 5 million gil into this market is very risky, but it does generally have a pretty good chance of turning a massive profit. So let's talk about other high risk purchases though. Anything glamour related like the Tsukiyomi weapons or other trial drops mentioned before have a chance of spiking in price during main patch since so many new players and old veteran players will come back to the game after a break. Even numbered patches are very notorious for this, meaning that if they see that really hot skimpy glam, ugh, type TV leggings aren't for sale though, but if I could, oh my god, that would sell well. But there is a good chance that they'll finally buy that's skimpy glam since demand increases and supply probably has mellowed out by then and crafters are looking elsewhere the price should spike but again major disclaimer i cannot promise that this will pan out i am calling it very high risk for a reason because you could easily run a loss on investment very very easily if things don't go the way you expect anyhow that is all for this video i went slightly over time and i apologize for that but i really genuinely hope that this video helped you out to find some neat markets to flip and if you'd like to help support my channel, I'd be incredibly appreciative if you catapulted a market onto that like button and flipped a cat daddy on top of that subscribe button. I honestly hope you have an absolutely epic day. Anyhow, this is over time. I'll talk to you later. Take care.